Eric, there is so much I want to say, and despite all my feelings of regret, I can't help but smile at the irony of it all. As an immortal, I've always taken it for granted that I could make things right. You always think that you have time, my love, but the day comes when you realize that your time has run out. Over the last month, I've had the sense that I was being followed. I assumed that it was a Nosferatu pervert or a curious Malkavian. But last night, they came for me, Eric. A Sabbat Inquisitor leading a pack invaded my home and attempted to capture me. I was only able to escape their chains with the judicious use of my majesty and fleetness. I informed the Sheriff of the attack, and the Court of London has deployed scouts to find the Sword of Cain. But I am not optimistic. They don't know what they're up against. I myself am shocked at their attack. The Inquisition of the Sabbat's primary focus is with internal matters of their set. Of course they engage in battle with enemies of the Sword of Cain, but they weren't there to assassinate me. They wanted to abduct and interrogate me. I've racked my mind for anything I've been involved in that might be of interest to the Sabbat's Inquisition, and the only possible connection I can think of was my brief exchange with Melanthia. You spoke with her as well. Is there anything you've heard regarding her? In truth, while this danger has brought me to write to you now, it's something I've wanted to do for many months, but could never find the right words. Instead of searching for eloquence, let me speak honestly and plainly. I love you, Eric. The time we've spent apart has been a tragic time in my life, and I wish that this breach between us had never happened. I wasn't wrong to blame you for what you had done, but there are things I couldn't bring myself to tell you, partially to protect you, partially because of shame. In order to protect you, my darling, I allowed myself to become trapped in a web of intrigue belonging to the Nosferatu known as Madame Filth. And to keep you safe all this time, I have had to serve her in whatever ways she imagined. I have had to betray the trust of old friends, act against my own values, and degrade my sense of self-respect. You realize that if you had known, you would have never allowed me to trade my honor for your safety, which is why I didn't tell you. But if my remaining nights are few, then I would spend them knowing that there are no lies between us. Darling, even though I am afraid, I still find you drifting through my thoughts. And if something has happened to Melanthia, then you might also be in danger. So in addition to my love, I send you a warning and knowledge you might use to save yourself from potential danger. The Sabbat Inquisition is a relentless enemy, containing the most dangerous fanatics of the sect. You must not underestimate them, and if you are to make a plan, the first stage is to prepare. And to prepare, you must know what you're up against. The mere thought of the Sabbat Inquisition fills me with a sense of dread and despair. As the agency that enforces the internal orthodoxy of the Sabbat, it serves as a watcher in the night, searching the sect for internal enemies. This Inquisition, inspired by the Mortal Inquisition, targets those who dare to practice the dark arts of infernalism and heretics who dare to deny Cain or speak against Nodism. It is a shadowy, ominous force, capable of great acts of horror in the name of their dark faith. This order was founded in 1804 by a Ventu antitribu Priscus named Gustav Malenhaus, who survived an encounter with infernalists with the help of a fanatically faithful group of La Sombra, a Nautist cabal, and the Montreal-based pack known as the Shepherds of Cain. It was created to eradicate the growing infernalism amongst the sect. Vampires, being creatures driven by a thirst for power, can easily fall into the dark and sadistic practices. Over time, the Inquisition expanded its authority into the realm of religious purity within the Sword of Cain. In the beginning, the Sabbat Inquisition was also tasked with enforcing the Code of Milan, 
but would lose that power by the end of the century due to the machinations of the Black Hand. However, by the turn of the 20th century, the Inquisition's leadership became corrupt and abused their power to condemn heretics as a political tool. In response, the Black Hand violently reformed the Order in 1919 by annihilating its agents in a battle outside Philadelphia. This history has led to an intense and vicious rivalry between the Inquisition and the Black Hand. It isn't unusual in mortal society for different orders of secret police to resent each other and engage in political infighting. Why would it be any surprise in the world of Canaanites? In an interesting turn, the leader of the Black Hand, an Asalite anti-tribune named Julian of Avenon, resigned from his position and worked to rebuild the Inquisition. He had discovered information that the Hand had been infiltrated by strange heretical forces who were manipulating it to do harm to the interests of the Sabbat. He re-established the Inquisition in 1924 and became the first canine to hold the title of Grand Inquisitor, surviving a dozen assassination attempts in the last 20 years. Grand Inquisitor Julian played a crucial role in the resurgence of the Inquisition, but his actions have also caused much conflict within the Black Hand, and rumor says that the Hand much desires his death. It is a dangerous game, my love, to be a part of both groups. Those who have dared to tread upon such dangerous ground have vanished without a trace in most cases, and so it is a testament to Julian that he still survives. The Sabbat Inquisition holds a great deal of power within the sect. They are the ones who are tasked with rooting out those who would seek to undermine the Sword of Cain's religious beliefs. Their authority is akin to that of the Templars, and they are often seen as a subset of their ranks. This is even more impressive when you consider the organization is composed of but a mere few dozen canines. These inquisitors roam the territories of the Sabbat, dispensing the sect's punishment and overseeing rites of contrition. They're often found in nomadic packs and make up a formidable team consisting of three judge inquisitors and two knight inquisitors, all led by the eldest judge among them. Despite their scarce numbers, the Inquisitors cast a long shadow across the Sabbat's domains, striking fear into the hearts of the unrepentant. Amidst the psychotic denizens of the Sabbat, the Inquisition has gained a well-earned reputation for cruelty, a distinction not easily earned amongst those willingly label themselves monsters. It is a complex system, my love, but one whose horror is necessary to maintain the purity of the Sabbat. The Inquisition serves as a reminder that even in the eternal darkness of our existence, there are still those who seek to corrupt and destroy in the name of their religious fanaticism. Torture is the most common method for investigation, and one imagines their holy office to be filled with images and lovingly recorded transcripts of those canines whose last moments were spent surrounded by their own screens. In times past, the Inquisitors were recognized by their scarlet robes and iron reliquaries, symbols of their office. Although modern knights have seen the Inquisitors abandon their robes for more practical attire, each reliquary is a unique artifact bestowed upon the Inquisitor by the Regent and serves as a symbol of their power. The destruction of a fallen Inquisitor's reliquary is a ritual performed by the Inquisition to erase all trace of the fallen from their ranks. An Inquisitor's badge of office is a weapon and a symbol, the Iron Reliquary, gifted directly by the Regent. This connection to the Regent can be verified through the use of aspects by any sect member reinforcing the Inquisitor's authority. The reliquary also serves as a sacred object in which inquisitors and their subjects swear to truth. The Inquisition is led by the Grand Inquisitor, who is appointed directly by the Regent of the Sword of Cain and closely monitored by an envoy which is bound to the Regent. Underneath the Grand Inquisitor are the Judge Inquisitors and Knight Inquisitors, who are typically organized in nomadic packs of up to five members. The pack is led by the most senior judge, who holds the position of ductus. 
These field agents are overseen by watchers, usually retired judges themselves, from a strong point known as Santo Oficio, or Holy Office, the core of the Inquisition. This location is kept secret, and it's where every trial and investigation of an Inquisitor is recorded. They alone hold the authority to accuse, question, and judge any member of the sect, save the regent of the Sabbat, on charges of heresy or consorting with the Infernal. An Inquisitor may apprehend any such suspect, and any resistance or attempt to escape is taken as evidence of guilt. The accused's priest must be present to bear witness to the interrogation, trial, and ultimate destruction, and may plead for their packmate's innocence. The Inquisition prefers to conduct its trials in full view of the sect to serve as a de deterrent to any who might entertain the thoughts of treachery. The Regent reviews every execution, and if the charges of heresy or infernalism are found to be unjust or baseless, the Inquisitor may themselves face retribution. A sect member found guilty is always tortured and executed. Heretics are killed by various gruesome means, while the sentence for infernalism is always death by fire. Individuals condemned for heresy or infernalism are never diablerized, as the stain on her soul would be transferred to the vampire who consumes her. An individual found to have diablerized a heretic or infernalist must be destroyed immediately under the same charge as the individual she consumed, lest the corruption spread like a scourge. I don't know why they've come for me, and I will do my best to evade them, but by their reputation I worry that I am not well suited to an eternity on the run. They aren't the sort of kindred who seem prone to distraction. So I will run, Eric, and with what time remains to me, I will love you. Please take care of yourself. Do not despair, and do not wait. Get somewhere safe, and endure the storm. Goodbye, Eric. Amelia, Clan Toreador. London, September, 1944.